Hello everyone, welcome back. It's been a while since I published a Grasshopper tutorial, but this time as you can see on your screen, we are not going to be making an architectural building, but instead we will make this animated art installation. The reason for this change is I've always wanted to explore animation within Grasshopper. Uh, and since I have V-Ray, I also wanted to try out their V-Ray Grasshopper components. For this tutorial, I started out using Rhino 6 uh, along with V-Ray Next. But ever since Rhino 7 and V-Ray 5 came out, I have upgraded to those respective versions. But if you're still using Rhino 6 and V-Ray Next, um, no worries, you can still follow along quite easily. And now a little bit about the installation itself. As you can see, the installation is real. And it's based in Terminal 1 of the Changi Airport in Singapore. There are actually two of these separated by just a few meters apart. The installation itself is designed by German design firm Art Plus Com. My apologies if that's not how you pronounce it. And when I first saw this, I really was just wowed by it. And the copper raindrop that you see does give you this sense of um, calmness after the hectic traveling. And since then, I've decided I want to recreate this in Grasshopper and be able to customize it. I just never had the time to do it until, until now. So. In the end, what you will achieve is what you see on your screen or something similar because I will walk you through creating each of these steps. But in the end, what you will get is a fully customizable, um, well, your own kinetic rain or kinetic something else. Um, as you can see here, I have the, the rain model and I have here also a different type of model, which I will show you later on. And these are the points that dictates um, how many do you want? So if you have the computational power for this to render this out, you can actually make a thousand rain droplets covering the whole ceiling or something like that. So that's fully customizable here. How many points on the short side, which is 15 right now set 38 along the long side. Uh, I think, I believe these are also the actual numbers of droplets in the real kinetic rain sculpture. And um, yeah, some of these useful points, it's mainly to help us reduce the amount of points so that we can focus on creating it. Um, and when we are done with it, we can just set it to full points and it will just make all the points. And then we can render because with all this um, animating through this for testing and developing it, it's going to take a while. Uh, the next one is the base mesh. This basically is a long, um, for now I've used a randomized mesh. That is how the points will move. This is what govern it. And lastly, the visualization, which is combining the base mesh with all the points, as you can see, it's actually done with a mesh to curve intersection. And these are my own um, animation uh, display. As you can see, it doesn't lead to anywhere except for these two, which will ultimately be used in V-Ray. So um, if you don't have V-Ray, like I've said here, use V-Ray set to false. So it's not actually um, the geometry doesn't go to V-Ray yet. V-Ray doesn't get anything from it. Um, what you would get here, this is for myself to calculate how many frames. Um, I will show you that later on. Um, but what this will do is you can actually animate this slider and you will get what you see on your Rhino viewport and you can render that out. Of course, you can also use, um, well, one of these uh, render uh, settings or the display settings. Or if you have a different render, you can also plug that in because um, what you get is just the droplets model and the strength, which is basically the, the strength that comes from the ceilings that attach to the droplets. So if you have a way to animate from one slider for your preferred renderer, then you can just use this instead. Now, 
Um, as for the free rate part, um, this is the usual time. I will explain that later on. Um, setting up a camera, how you can use the camera to animate it, and also um, just using preset material to color our droplets, uh, setting up some lights. Um, now, this is also different, uh, which I'll explain just in a second. And in the end, what you will have is, well, you will be able to render this out. You can set your resolution here. As you can see, I have an ultra wide, but rendering this out is going to take a long time. So all my animation has actually been done at 50% um, of the full resolution. Um, and now, what I, when I mentioned that you can fully customize it, um, I've also I already mentioned customization of how many geometries that you want. You can also customize what type of model you want. For example, this one, um, if I set this to true, which is going to be the other one, um, now it turns to just paper lamps, um, which I will show you in a rendered out sequence very soon. So if you have a different and a different mesh, you can just use that instead because all it takes it's a base point to attach and a mesh. So if you have that, uh, you'll be able to attach anything you want, a sphere, a box, or a star, um, a card, any geometry. Now, for the base mesh, if you don't want to use this um, randomized uh, wave, you can just, uh, what I've done here also, is make your own uh, wave. So what I've done here is actually put in some few points. I drew a line for these points and then I interpolated it into a surface. And this method will give you the maximum flexibility into doing whatever you want. Because in the end, all you need is just a surface like this. So if you have a surface, um, any of those surfaces that can intersect with the points, you will be able to animate it. So I guess that's in a nutshell uh, the script explained. And now I'm going to show you the animated sequence of using this lamp model. And this is the rendered results using the lamp model. So with that being said, let's move on to the next video where we will start to create the Grasshopper script.